All right, folks, we're back with another card review this morning, catching up from this weekend, but also a new hero card. Zyrella the Devout has been revealed. Eight mana for Priest. Battle Cry trigger the death rattle of every friendly minion that died this game. So death rattle slash res priest stuff happening here, which means uh, this can do a lot of things. It can uh, heal you with like Moargs or light shower elementals. It can summon lots of minions. Like you saw, like Plague Proto Drakes in the reveal. It can draw you cards with Loot Hoarders or Thalnos Seas. And uh, just a gigantic turn whenever you play Zyrella. Just build a board, potentially heal, recover, stabilize, uh, deal AoE damage like we'll talk about with the card later in the video. It's a lot of possibilities here uh, with this hero card. And then on top of that, we've got these two insane hero powers. Holy Touch is just a restore five health. And uh, every turn, this is going to flip over to deal five damage on the hero power. That is so much damage output, really giving you the opportunity to turn the corner in the game once you've kind of stabilized off the back of your Zyrella. So, uh, you know, Blizzard's talked about giving control decks like ways to end games. Certainly Void Spike is going to do that. So whether you're trying to, you know, heal up off Holy Touch or just burn people down with Void Spike, that possibility exists depending on kind of the game state or once you get healed up enough, of course, that void spike will be there. These do flip automatically whether you use them or not, uh, which in some ways could be good, you know, um, but also could technically be bad. Like if you really need to spend mana now and want to like save your heal for next turn, that may not always be a possibility or uh, sort of vice versa. But in other cases, like if you don't want to commit to healing because you don't need to, and you don't want to waste that mana, you might get your damage anyway. So depending on the game states, upsides and downsides. But all the same, uh, this is a very big instant value battle cry that does demand a little bit of deck support. Like you got to run those death rattles, but Priest runs uh, stuff like this without much problem anyway. Like tossing in some light chair elementals is no big deal. So I could see like a death rattle res Nizoth value control grindy priest thing happening uh with this card and his auth serving as like big finishers maybe you don't even need both Zyrella might just solve those problems all on her own now of course you know these like late game value decks don't really thrive in, in current hearthstone so you know if we just drop this right into today's meta i think it'd still honestly be too slow despite the damage output of this void spike hero power. I just don't think that would be a quick enough race. Uh, so this is not, you know, an, an, an instant obvious choice in a current meta, but there are any slower metas in the future. This will shine, right? Like this, I think would be a really powerful card. There's also this like death rattle damagey thing that could happen. We've got some like leper gnome style cards, or you could just deal a bunch of damage to your opponent with Zyrella. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, option for Zyrella as well. This could be like a burst finisher in a way between the void spikes and uh, all that potential damage. So that might be a better way to use Zyrella, but all the same, you know, I, I'm going to rank this card for potential future use cases. And, you know, if, if the quest line meta ever goes away, a card like Zyrella, I think will be very, very powerful in large part. Thanks to these hero powers, having a lot of output and finishing potential. So uh, pretty strong card. All right, next up here is Najak Hexen, a new 4 mana 1 4. Legendary for Priest. Battlecry, take control of an enemy minion and then Death Rattle, give the minion back. So, uh, lots of lots of breakdown here. This card's, I think, going to create a lot of discussion. So, let's see. Uh, first and foremost, though, I want to clarify you will not be able to attack with a minion immediately off of this effect. Unlike cards like Shadow Madness or Potion of Madness. It only lasts until end of turn and enable you to attack. This is a permanent effect, so you're not going to get to attack right away. So that does mean, like, if you really want this to work well, I think it's going to have to be something like a taunt minion or a rush slash charge minion so that you're able to hopefully leverage that minion in some way. Because otherwise, you know, if you just play this on whatever random 5-5, five five, your opponent says, okay, I'm just going to kill your four health minion here. It's got no attack. I'll just play whatever and trade into it or whatever spell and immediately get my five, five back, which isn't totally useless. That kind of means you've like stalled for a turn. Essentially you've like frozen their minion sort of so that they can't attack with it when you pass it back to them. So there's still like a little bit of disruption there, but ultimately you spent four mana to kind of freeze a minion, which, you know, isn't exciting at all. It's like a four mana freeze effect, which is 
just not good enough in Hearthstone these days. So I think it's where you start to get that like taunt upside or rush upside where Hexen makes way more sense because if you copy your opponent's big taunt, they may not have a way to snipe Hexen from behind that taunt. They might have to trade in minions and then they have to kill their own taunt anyway and the death rattle becomes irrelevant. Uh, same with Rush, like if you can just trade something in immediately, you're still gonna get some value back off Hexen. Now, uh, there is also like silence style plays. You could silence Hexen here. And uh, then of course you get to keep your opponent's minion. I think that's like asking a little too much, like bundling together some silence effects and stuff. So I think it's I think it's exactly in those Russian taunt worlds where this thrives and and really succeeds. The, I guess the the question then becomes: Are there going to be enough scenarios where that makes sense? There are certainly Russian taunt minions that pop into the meta, so I don't think it's impossible. But I still think most decks have ways to snipe hex in and like get through a taunt effectively or around a taunt, I guess I should say effectively. Rush minions, like, is there actually gonna be good stuff to trade into? Is all of that worth four mana anyway? Like, you still have to spend four mana here for just a, I would say, moderate swing on board that's very conditional to board state and minion type and deck type. So, a lot of people are really hyped about this card as like a four mana mind control. I, I don't, I'm not buying it. Like I, I want to like it, uh, you know, it's cool in theory, but I think it's too easy for opponents to work around and sometimes just too hard for you to find the right board state or turn where you're committing four mana to this play where it doesn't feel too risky or feel like your opponent is just going to immediately grab it back and you kind of spent four mana for a meager stall at best where you just kind of slowed them down for half a turn or whatever without really achieving any sort of actual value because priest in general is a deck that can clear things can can actually stabilize can extract a lot of value out of given cards i don't know that they care as much about stalls right like they're just wiping stuff they're not a deck that stalls as effectively as others because they don't have that like win condition they're playing towards usually the win condition for priest historically has been let's out value let's grind people down from control standpoints so, uh, I don't know. I'm not seeing it on the Hexen. A lot of people like this card, so please discuss and debate. I, I've heard points on both sides. I'm just not as convinced that the swing here is as easy or relevant as some people are making it out to be, but curious to hear those takes uh, nonetheless. So moving on here to a rogue legendary Seraphine Fleet Runner, a new five mana five five that's bringing Burgle Rogue back. It's got a battle cry, replace your minions in hand and deck with ones from other classes. They cost two less. So this is a pretty cool card, right? Uh, instant burgle action across your hand and deck, specifically affecting minions, not spells, which does give you a little bit of control over like making sure your deck doesn't totally fall apart. Like you still have some removal spells or burst damage or whatever it might be to complement the minions here. So, you know, theoretically this offers you a big tempo advantage. You're getting minions that are two mana better than they're supposed to be essentially, uh, but they're random. And that, that's always where cards like this, you know, struggle is that it's like, what am I gonna do with some random warrior minion? Is that gonna fit my game plan? Or, or some random warlock minion that's got like demon synergy or something going on or self damage effects. Like, is this actually gonna be good for me? And you're just gonna get all that haphazard stuff. So. Cards like this always to be point a little more towards meme than dream because of that aspect. It's just like, man, I can't reliably get anything good out of this. I'm just kind of throwing it up on the air and hoping for the best. And in Hearthstone these days, we just have far too consistent and reliable game plans. People know what they're going to do. They know how they're going to win games. They're working towards that goal constantly. Cards like this, they don't do that, right? They just hope for the best. Like, yeah, you could occasionally steal a game off some crazy high rolls, but this won't be a reliable tool that people use. I've seen it compared to Deck of Lunacy, which in some ways is a fair comparison, right? It does a similar thing for minions instead of spells. But what made Deck of Lunacy so strong uh, is that there was a very limited number of spells in a pool and, and mages were kind of not necessarily controlling, but directing Deck of Lunacy how to be good. In other words, like, getting the grand slams all the time because of the way lunacy worked and you could push your seven mana cards to 10 and back to seven. So you can't do that as reliably or really at all with Seraphine here. It's going to be very hard to manipulate into stuff you want because there's just such a wider pool. And although there are class minions, which is better than neutral minions, you don't have like neutral low rolls. There's still a lot of really specific class minions 
that could be very awkward to use. There's also people complaining about in wild format, like this actually transforms your test gray means. You can't even use this with test gray main. So some like kind of anti fun stuff going on there in wild standard. That's not a concern right now, but uh, it, nonetheless, it's just, you know, it's, it's fun. I'm going to play the crap out of this card. It looks really, really enjoyable, but from a competitive standpoint, I just don't think it gets there. Even as like a bailout for an aggro deck, we've tried that game plan so many times in the past. You're probably just better off running some burst damage or something, right? Or some card draw instead of a card like this, hoping for the best. So all in all, I just don't see a path to success for Seraphine. Next up here is the Cheaty Snowballed, a new three mana, three, four, four Shaman. Some more Frost stuff. This guy's really lacing those snowballs with some magical <laughs> crystals of death. Because uh, after an enemy is frozen, you deal three damage to it. So uh, some more some more Frost payoff synergy here. We've already seen like Snow Fight. Uh, this could help you ramp up the damage done from a card like Snow Fight so that it's more than just kind of a stall out or a single minion removal. And it can instead be... Uh, you know, an AOE effect when bundled with Cheaty Snowbolt. I, I still think that's actually, like, not going to be worth it. Like, a two-part removal for six mana. Like, that's what was shown in the video for Cheaty Snowbolt's reveal. I don't necessarily see that happening. But, but, this can affect face. Now, we don't currently have a face frost spell in uh, in standard format. Like, Frost Shock is actually part of, of Wild now. It rotated. It's not in the core set. Uh, but... The fact that this can go off multiple times, which was confirmed in the video, and we've also seen this effect in duels, when, when it hits multiple times, it keeps proccing. So, you know, if you froze your opponent's face three times with this on board, it would deal nine damage to them. And if there's any little minions that can freeze, like with Baron Glacier or whatever else a Shaman might get access to, this could actually become like a burst damage lethal sort of card, where you stick three freezers, you pop this guy on board and you hit your opponent for nine or whatever, right? Or more potentially along with whatever other combinations. So I am actually leaving a line open for this card. I don't know how useful this is going to be as like a board clear. Like sometimes those two part things just don't really work all that well. But as a face out, that has me intrigued because Hearthstone likes going face. Uh, and this could actually be a lot of burst damage, particularly like in wild with frost shocks and stuff. But even beyond that, um, in standard, who knows? They might be able to line something up. So keep an eye out for Cheaty Snowbolt. Here's a way to hit your opponent in the face really hard on top of whatever kind of uh, board clear utility bonus he might have. But as a 3-minute three 3-4, three, like, he's fine to tempo out sometimes to set up for a future turn and then also maybe just a win condition on occasion. And then next appears the Urzul Giant. This guy looks so sick. We saw him tease in that other... Other card review hunter this set. He's a 13 mana 8-8 eight, eight demon, and he costs one less for each friendly minion that died this game. So some real like token demon hunter payoff synergies here. You got your old board of crazy demon hunters you're summoning. Vengeance, vengeance, vengeance. And uh, then you get a zero mana Urzul giant followed up. And clearly, you know, giants like this have seen lots of success in the history of Hearthstone. Most recently, I guess, Flush Giant is something we've seen a lot of, too much of, in Hearthstone in this set. And, uh, you know, Urzul Giant always has a chance there, right? Like, Token Demon Hunter got a little support, play some tokens, you get this guy down very affordably. I think in duels in particular, that's going to be very commonly seen. I think this will be an amazing duels card. In standard, though, I think 13 mana is just a little too much. You know, it's hard to map these things out, but a lot of the Demon Hunter token stuff starts coming online, like turn three, turn four, turn five. And it's like, you know, turn seven has like expendable formers, which could obviously get this done by itself in a perfect world. But turn seven, giants aren't as exciting, right? I think you need them to start hitting on those like turn threes, turn fours, turn fives. You know, flesh giants are coming down that early, and that's what made them so strong. Um, if, if you're not getting this out by turn five, I don't know if it's going to be impactful enough, honestly. And I'm not sure Demon Hunters can reliably get this down by turn five. They still probably need those like three, four, five mana spots to kill enough tokens. And I, I still think Urzul's will be like three, four mana at that stage. So I, I'm afraid the breakpoints here are just a little unfavored for standard format because I don't know if Demon Hunter has a reliable enough token opener to get there. It's just like Death Rattle Demon Hunter, which actually has a lot of minions dying that this could almost be a complimentary piece in. That deck doesn't need this to hit as soon, probably, because they've got kind of more consistent pressure. And even if just one of these <clears throat> lands on like turn six or seven or something, 
that might just be like that final push where this isn't doing most of the work of the deck. It's just doing like the final blow. So I, I don't want to write it out from that standpoint. Like it might actually be halfway decent. I think this is fine. I just, you know, it's not, I don't think it's at that flesh giant level of like really, really likely to be good. All right, so next up here, we have the Undying Disciple, a new six mana taunt uh, for Priest, three, seven, death rattle deal damage equal to this minion's attack to all enemy minions. This is a lot like that one, like, I don't know, neutral kobold card. I'd like TNT, Tunnel Dude, I don't know his name, but a very similar sort of effect. This one scales uh, with the attack, so theoretically it could deal extra damage. Uh, and, uh, you know, clearly this is a death rattle that could feed into uh, some Zyrella stuff. You pl plop a lot of death rattles in your deck or even randomly generate them. This is a way to uh, get some board clear the turn that you play Zyrella because this does only affect enemy minions. It doesn't hurt your own stuff. That said, I, this is still competing for Light Shower Elemental at that like six mana Death Rattle spawn. I don't know how many six mana Death Rattles a single deck can run. And I think Light Shower Elemental is a little bit better for current day Hearthstone, honestly, because by the time you get to like six or even eight mana for the Zyrella, uh, the board clear is probably not going to be quite as relevant, right? Like decks that are swarming really wide have already done their thing, turned the corner looking for face damage. It might be more about that stabilization and healing. So if you're forced to pick one or the other, I think Light Shower Elemental gets the nod. And I don't know that you can run like four you know, defensive six drops in a deck like this. That may just be too much. So it's interesting that these exist in the same rotation. If this were like five mana, I'd see a lot more openings for it. So it, it's totally fine. It's going to be great randomly generated. I mean, it, there might be certain metas where this gets the pick over Light Shower, or maybe you run both. Totally okay card, just not a super uh, crazy exciting one or competitive one compared to its peers. All right, moving on here to Hunter's Spring the Trap. More secret support, uh, four mana spell. Deal three damage from minion and cast a secret from your deck. Honorable kill, cast two secrets from your deck. So this is not like a flanking strike mold, right? But instead of getting a minion, you get a secret. And you know, two mana to deal three to a minion, two mana for a secret, that's fair. I think that's reasonable. Uh, and it's kind of swingy, so you know, that's a fine card. But then with the honorable kill, getting two secrets definitely cranks up <clears throat> the value here of this one. As I'm losing my voice, man, uh-oh. Card review season, right? Uh, so, uh, you know, in, in a case where you get honorable kill, I think it's actually really, really good, right? It's got kind of that ring toss style payoff uh, for four mana, but also the upside of having dealt with something on your opponent's side of the board. Now, honorable kill for dealing three is probably, I think, the most favorable number in the mid game. There are a lot of three health things that kind of linger around in Hearthstone, and I, I do think Hunter's a little bit better at setting up for honorable kills in a lot of classes. If you have things like hyenas in your deck, you can trade in hyenas uh, to make sure numbers line up better for you. Maybe even preemptively, like run a hyena into a 3-4 the turn before because you know you're going to play for Spring the Trap on turn four. Maybe your opponent doesn't have anything to trade into. So you're kind of setting it up. So I think this will be more consistently achieved than some classes that don't have as favorable lines for honorable kills. In which case, you know, this is really, really nice. Now, of course, with a card like this, it always has to be in a secret environment, I think, to make it worth it. Otherwise, you're just going to want, like, higher pressure, higher face damage outs. Face hunters, for instance, aren't going to run this because they have to commit to secrets. They have to commit to stuff like this that isn't, like, face-oriented. So we're going to need a deck that's a little bit more driven by the secret package, which currently we don't have. Is something that has definitely succeeded historically in Hearthstone, just not at the moment. So, you know, those are always checks on this, but I think as soon as that environment gets set up, as soon as secrets are a payoff, cards like this one are a great way to fuel those secret activations because you've got secrets there, so you know you're going to be more readily able to proc any sort of secret synergy things. Uh, but also it's just, you know, a, a good board maintaining card while also developing your own game plan and sometimes just punching in a lot of stuff uh, for four mana. So I do like a lot about this card, actually. Uh, I just hope Secret Hunter is able to get there and then push us away from the world of endless face huntering. Zyrella the Devout is a four star card. The Jack Hexen is a three star card. Seraphine Fleet Runner is a two star card. Cheaty Snowbold is a four star card. Urzul Giant is a three star card. Spring the Trap is a four star card. Undying Disciple is a two star card. So there you go, folks. That uh, wraps it up for this review. As always, share your thoughts on these cards. I think this one in particular has had a lot of debate, so I'm curious to hear where all of you land on that. I kind of landed in the middle.
Who could have guessed? <laughs> I think it's fine. I just don't think it's great. A lot of people think it's going to be nuts. I just, I'm not seeing it. Tell me why you think it's going to be nuts. But uh, look forward to that in the comments below. Thanks as always for watching. And until next time, game on.